There's different types of overhead cranes based on application and need. When you get into higher capacity, you start looking into the structure itself, and then you're really looking into what the crane is actually doing. So that is really the driving force behind the type of crane that is chosen. Componentry that's used for the cranes, the hoist, the end trucks, the type of controls, that is really determined on the application that the crane is being used in. So if it is going to be a situation where you're doing a lot of higher percentage of the capacity lifts, that is all going to go into higher end Lexus type componentry. If it's a standard application, standard lifting, you know, light fabrication, then you start looking into the more affordable, budget friendly and cost conscious componentry. The quality itself lends to fitting within the CMAA standards. So you don't necessarily have a drop off in quality. It's more the components being able to handle a higher duty cycle as opposed to a lighter workload. Modular cranes are typically used again in the lighter duty, typical fabrication. When you get into a process crane, you're looking at higher capacity lifts or higher percentage capacity lifts, higher turnover. So this crane is running for a longer period of time each day. A process crane has maintenance in mind. So downtime is very critical with those types of overhead cranes. So if you're in a steel mill or an auto processing plant, you need to look at how much downtime affects your production. If production is decreased and your overhead crane is down, it's gonna hurt your business a lot more. So you need to look at those components. Gantry cranes can be used in a number of different applications. Portable gantries that are basically moved into an area, a pick is made, the gantry actually doesn't move while it's under load. And you also have cranes yeah, gantry cranes that are used in other applications where they're on a rail system or tied into the building on one side where it's used to lift materials and move to the other side. So if you have an application where you have a large overhead crane that spans a wide bay, but you don't necessarily want to be able to use that for lighter capacity lifts, you can put in a gantry crane on rails in the floor and then use that to move materials. You can use different cranes within the same bay. Uh, we've done projects where you have an overhead crane that runs an entire bay, and again, it's a higher capacity. The gantry crane below it actually is a lighter capacity and runs in just a certain area of the bay. And I've also seen applications where you have an overhead crane moving in one direction and the gantry crane is actually moving in the perpendicular direction. So monorails are used in lighter applications as well. What you are sacrificing by using a monorail is that Y axis. So we always say that cranes are used for X, Y, and Z axis. So you've got your lift, you've got your side to side travel across the bay, and then you've got your runway travel. A monorail only gives you the lift and basically what we'll call a runway travel. So it's in a single line, it doesn't have any side to side movement to it. They're moving materials from a drop zone into a machine, and it doesn't need to go side to side at all. You've got different types of jib cranes. Um, those are typically used for more of a workstation environment. So if you have a person that's working on a table here, and they just need to pick materials off of a pallet, move it onto a table, do some maintenance work, do some fabricating work, and then put it back on the pallet, you can use a jib crane because it's, it's more cost effective. And again, it's used more in a workstation environment where you just need a radius of swing. Um, you've got different types where a jib is mounted on the floor on a base plate and gives you 360 degrees of full rotation. If you don't want that floor space taken up, you can also mount them off of a column. The thing you lose there is your ability to rotate a full 360 degrees, you're more along the lines of 180 to 200 degrees of movement. Difference between a jib crane and a workstation crane, again, they're both used for a workstation environment. What the workstation crane allows you to do is still have movement. 
Those are typically lighter capacity. Max capacity of those is typically two tons. So you'll be able to do work in one cell, lift the material, move to the next cell, and onward. Also, the ability to add on to those systems is there, where a jib, you're stuck in that radius. You don't have the ability to move outside of that. The, the workstation crane gives you that X, Y, Z motion again. You really need to look at the future and what you expect to be able to do within the space that you have. If the space is going to require higher capacity lifts than what a normal jib crane or workstation crane can handle, you need to look at an overhead crane because that's really going to be what your, your need is going to be in the future.